usually I'm in uh, cash on Friday, but uh, started my day early with some work stuff. Just getting all the questions up for Friday q and I hope everyone's having a great day. Having everybody ready for a great weekend. We're settling in for those that are in this pathway, settling into the beginning of the high holiday craze. So that should really dominate uh, the world starting already uh, late next week. So we're in the world of, of Q and A. And there's a few questions that I, I got that sort of center around the same theme. So I think it's important to touch touch on them. I think the one I'll read is the one from uh, from Yoni, but it, there's a couple of people that sent very similar questions in. Um, I'm a bit confused. Throughout my life, I've heard concepts of giving and how important it is, and how we feel great when we do things for others. I've also heard an issue out there called being Mr. Nice Guy. It's when you have a person who's a definition of helping other people. He can never say no. He doesn't think twice. To do people a favor. Some people have confidence. Okay. Um, all right. One example could be take the guy who decided to reward himself working hard f by eating a roll of sushi. Someone comes in and he, and he asks for a piece and he gives him the piece. Right. So this seems to be a recurring question that is a great real life question. It's hard to balance between being bigger, doing more, giving and allowing ourselves to get into the world and watch the world just roll over us. There's a concept that says nice guys finish last, which means when you're playing in a game where some people aren't nice and you are nice, sometimes you lose. So when here, I wanna just sort of like break it down and I wanna move away from words like nice, and giving and favors into words like right and wrong. Words like um, growth and change the paradigm for how we see giving from being a blanket give to being an analysis as to what's the right thing to do, regardless of the consequences. What's necessary for my growth? What would God want of me? And when we start to change that way of seeing the world from nice to right, there are many times the right thing to do is to not be nice. I am sure there are times that if the state of Israel would have been like, hey guys, do you mind if we all like get along? Like, no, nah, we're not going to like raise an army. Come on. I, I'm so, I know that, you know, you, you just bombed this area, but like maybe we can just talk about it. Here's, here's some more land. Here's some more stuff, right? Could I, I'm going to be the giver. That wouldn't work out very well. People like that all the time. People are empowering the people around them to be more dysfunctional. The classic case that we speak about here all the time are helicopter parents, of which I personally am at risk, especially for my little ones. I'd love to be a helicopter parent. I'd love to solve everything. I hate, hate when my kids or my wife for that matter is struggling in anything. And I would love more than anything to fight every one of my kids battles and give to them the answers to help them with math homework and give to them a more uh, sophisticated uh, defense when they really do the wrong thing, but they're getting in trouble in school and I have to hold it back. I would love to go out in the business world and just assume everyone's going to treat me well and never use a contract and never have to worry about putting into, process, into place things that may trigger when things go wrong. I would love that. I've been burned times. I'm sure people have as well. Well-intentioned people that really aren't so well-intentioned. So if we live in the world of giving and not giving, yeah, we may end up going over, you know, the Torah demands of us to 
give a portion of our money away in charity, but it creates limits. But what about me giving more? Well, God's like, I got it. No, I appreciate that. But anytime you're operating off emotions or even operating off one trait and you go overboard, you'll ultimately end up losing. So how do you know it's right? This is what introspection is all about. This is what life feels like. What we're trying to do here on the show is start a new pathway towards life, which is introspective, which is deliberate. That's why journaling is a core to all of us. Because it's not really about whether you get it right. It's about whether you strive to get it right, like authentically tr strive to get it right, right? The, the husband, the, the, the dad, the, the business person, whatever it is, the person who is trying to get it right, they may get it wrong sometimes, but they're actually thinking about it. That's the growth. The growth in the marriage is not like you're married for 15 minutes and like you say everything she wants to hear. The growth in marriage is you say something, it doesn't go over well, and it's opposed to just getting into like, he said, she said, I'm annoyed. You actually go back into your own world and go, what did I do wrong? How did that not come over well? Why do I feel this way for? How come I was threatened? How come I took, how come I took that so offensively? This happened so many times in my marriage where I would be upset with my wife for something. And then only later after we talked it out, did I realize that I just don't understand her. I just don't, I don't think I understand women in general, but in particular, my wife, I don't understand my wife at the level that I understand myself. I understand her more now, but like, we're not the same people in any which way. So when I say things and do things, or when she says something or does or doesn't do something, if that would have came out of me, it would have meant one thing, but when it comes out of her, it means something else. If I'm not like, wait, 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 thinking about it, I'm not getting it. Once we realize that the world is virtual reality and what's going on around me really, in a way, is for my growth. And I understand that the way I grapple with things really is to go above them. Because once I get dragged down, I lose perspective. Then the way we approach life is what's right? What's the right thing here? What's the responsible? And once we start to ask those questions and start to really push ourselves to come up with those answers, then we go out into the world and we act in a way that is not being thrown by what someone else said, by someone else makes us feel, by how I feel, we're not thrown by this world of emotions that have us, has us going all over the place. We're not lost in the relationship. We're above the relationship. We, are, we, we, can, we can gain perspective almost immediately in situations. And what we're really striving for in life is not whether even the result happens. We're not even trying to manipulate the results because that's already playing in the sandbox. We're trying to do what's right. Now, part of what's right may be how would this impact the results? Fine. But the domain in which we live ends in our efforts. And as we cut off what's in someone else's head, what is the result, all of the things that get at take us out into the world and have us try to do things we can't play and we restrict ourselves to, am I doing what is right every day of my life? And when I look back to yesterday, am I sure my beliefs are correct? That's why I personally believe that learning and studying timeless wisdom like Torah is absolutely critical because you need a playbook. But the pursuit of wisdom, the pursuit of mentors, the asking questions about life, all of these things is exactly how we're supposed to live because there is no great business in this world that's not doing this. You can be sure that any company right now that is growing and thriving and is healthy is spending a portion of its time analyzing its actions, asking experts, thinking about the future and figuring out what's the right thing to do. 
I'm not saying from the way that we have to think about it, but just from the way that they have to think about it. There's no team that is winning games that, are not, that is not analyzing their plays and their play calls to figure out what's the right thing. What was the right move here? They may not be doing it from an ethical perspective, but they're doing it from an impactful perspective. They're watching game film all the time. Politicians that are trying to run for office are watching game film all the time. They're watching ads and polls and, and they're analyzing the impacts, whether they're using it to our benefit or not. Nobody, nobody who is great at anything just rolls into it. Now, God does anything, so you can be more effective, but the level of expertise takes place in the review. And once we realize that we're supposed to be bigger than it, and that giving is the pathway to everything, most of our challenges take place when we descend into this tug of war of quid pro quo. Now we're in this new world of, so what do I do? I'm going to get steamrolled over the place. And the answer is you may. When you take extreme ownership for your life, you may end up being a total victim and empowering bad behavior. You may be overly controlling. But when you play in this world of extreme ownership for your life, and you couple it with thought, you're just listening for the right keys and you're adapting and you're adapting and your life becomes as important as the business to that company owner. And your life becomes as important as the coach watching game film because it is that important to you. Period in the story, your life is the most important thing you have in this world and doing it right is the most important thing you're going to do in your life. The most important thing you're going to do in your life is get it right. Or at least to strive to get it right. More money, less money, more friends, less friends, bigger, smaller, home, whatever. People love you. They don't love you. That's all circumstance. You're responsible for your experience. And what is right, that's the challenge of life. The question of life is what's the right thing to do? I don't know. It depends who you ask. It depends the level of wisdom that you seek. It depends who you surround yourself with. It depends how you, how you question your own thinking. But the, stri- the, 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 the goal in life is to find that wisdom, is to live by that wisdom, and to set your life around wisdom and to control your actions so that it always aligns with the things that is right and wise. There is no one way. There is no one size fits all. Every scenario needs to be thoughtful. And that makes life daunting. We don't want that. That's why just to circle back, why the high holidays are so scary for people because nobody wants to be judged and people think of high holidays like Some of the things that people think about the high holidays, God's like sitting there and ready to like strike you. Well, maybe we'll talk about this. For those that get timeless lessons, we'll be talking about this. We don't want to be judged. We don't want to be analyzed. We don't want people to like question us. We don't want anyone to criticize us. We're so fragile. We're so concerned about looking bad and being wrong that we don't question our actions. We don't push ourselves to ask ourselves the tough questions. And so we don't know if we're being right or wrong. So when we do something, we're not sure it's even right. So we wait for a result. That person who really thinks about what's right and gives the sushi or gives their time and the person spits in their face, if you believe what you did was right, it doesn't matter to you. And you also know that you don't know the future. So who knows if in the future you'll make it back. And on the flip side, that person who's never thought about it and doesn't give, doesn't give, feels bad about it because they don't have that that strength to push for what they believe. 
is the right thing to do. Now, what I'm saying may sound vague. It is, because it's not supposed to be black and white. If it was, we wouldn't need to be here. If life was supposed to be black and white, we'd all be just computers. AI is black and white. It's a complexity of black and white, but it's always just one and a zero. Everything that every computer has ever done is always just ones and zeros. Sophisticated ones and zeros, but it's ones and zeros. It's at the end of the day, black and white. But the soul is complex and the soul is gray and life is gray. And the vagueness of which our lives work is, is the, the world in which we have to create clarity in. That's where we have to seek wisdom. That's where we have to push ourselves emotionally and spiritually and mentally. Because the greatest danger that we face is just not thinking. And not thinking makes our actions basically rely on coincidence. And we feel it sometimes where someone gives us a lot of credit for something that we did when deep down we know it was luck. There's another question that from Yechiel, listen to this question. You speak about talking about our pain and not just keeping it for ourselves, but using it to help others. What if you're going through something you don't see the purpose in pain? You don't know how you can share with anybody. How do you make your pain purposeful? So that's a great question. So this is very much connected. Pain isn't purposeful because it could be shared with others. Pain is purposeful because that's what pain is. When you live in a world and you believe that there's purpose to the world, there's purpose in everything. So there's purpose in pain. Not because you're finding the purpose in pain, because there's purpose in everything. And so if you are experiencing pain, by definition, there is purpose in that pain. The goal isn't to find the to find purpose in pain the goal is to be able to find the purpose in the pain there's purpose you don't know what the purpose is so you could be sure there's purpose and you may not see the purpose for 20 years i know someone who suffered a an accident when they were younger and later on in their lives like 10 15 years later it became the the north star for levels of helping like they can never dream. It, it, who knows? You're trying to constantly understand that there's purpose here. And it may be that the way you deal with pain is just the pain. You may be just dealing with pain and just trying to alleviate the pain. But part of the alleviation of the pain is to know that there's, gonna be, there's purpose here. And I want to find it. And I want to search for it. And I want to uncover it in myself. It's exactly the opposite of the coins, what we just, we spoke about. Giving, taking, pain, pleasure. These are all inputs into the avatar called you in the virtual reality game called life. But understand that whatever it is, it's purposeful. And whatever it is, you're either going to use it properly or use it improperly. And when we start to look at life that way, in a normal, healthy way, life starts to take on a little bit of a different taste. It becomes something that is worthy of our investigation. It becomes something that we're not going to get thrown by as quickly. It becomes something that is consistently purposeful. And even if we don't see how the purpose connects, we know there's purpose. And so we ride that purpose with a certain deliberation and a certain oomph in life that allows us to be bigger and better because we're not questioning why me, why me, why me? And we're getting into the world of how do I grow? How do I? It's a different approach and how to deal with the inputs that life sends our way. Okay, this is um, clearly lining us up for next week. So for everybody, thank you so much for another great week. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. Good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom. With God's help, I can't wait to see you again next week.